everybody, welcome to Round the Twist, episode 360. It is May 19th, 2019, and I have been gone for a month. I didn't realize it had been that long. Apologies, so sorry. Let's um, catch everyone up on what's been going on. Number one, grab your coffee, grab your knitting. Huh. So, a month. Uh, let me think. I don't even remember where we were a month ago. Um, in the ensuing time, let's just put it that way, uh, my, those of you that follow me on Instagram probably saw this, my uncle passed away very suddenly, so I took the kids and headed back to Iowa and did a two-day drive going back and a one-day drive coming home. Never want to do that again. God bless the people that invented portable DVD players that strapped to the back of the headrests of the seats because I could not have done that drive by myself otherwise. Um, it was a very quick, quick trip turnaround. So, and I only had one dog with me. I left Daisy at home. Uh, hubby had to work, so she's fine in the house all day. Lily is not, so I had a puppy and two kids and stop, frequent stops and yeah. Um, Met through Mother's Day last weekend. Happy Mother's Day, everybody. Uh, so the weekend in between, which would have been my normal recording weekend two weeks ago. Um, what was that? Was that Easter? No. No. Maybe it's been more than a month. Because I didn't record on Easter either. Well, whatever it was. I uh, spent time with family and doing stuff around here. So here I am. Also, uh, I hit a bout of just not doing anything, and I, I didn't have anything to show you, so that has gotten handled. Past it. Handled. However you want to put it, I'm through it, uh, so we can move on to what's, what's on the needles, right? It's been a while. I don't remember, and I didn't write show notes, so forgive me. We're flying by the seat of our pants here. Coffee. I'm trying to remember. I think it tastes like peach apricot, but I really don't remember what kind it is. So, first thing on the needles. Something that hasn't seen the light of day in a long, long time. The stained glass blanket. Take two. I managed to... Oh, and I left the other part upstairs. Oh, well. I managed to finish the first half. Now, there wasn't a whole lot left to do on the first half. But it is completely rectangled off, I guess. It's not... Squared off isn't the right term for it. Uh, I had two hexagons left. Yep, there's my... Little Progress Keeper by Melia Bella. So I added, let's see, this one, which I believe it looks like Happy Go Lucky, and this one on the end, which I know is Christmas Balls, that I did a pair of zigzagulars for my mom out of. So this is completely, it's half done for the size that I want it to be, but it is a completely usable lap blanket that can stretch from like my armpits all the way down, like cover my chest, go all the way down and cover my feet and wrap under my feet. That's how long it is, right? So I can be on the couch with it pulled all the way up. It can cover both my sides and drape down. There's space for one person. <laughs> I wanted to have space for two people. So I think I've decided what I'm going to do. I am going to, rather than have a smaller Thing. So I still have hexagons left over that my friend Sarah helped me with. Uh, so I'm going to keep adding those on, but I'm going to add them along the long edge of this. So just keep tacking on one side, then tack on the other long side until it's doubled in width. So currently, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 rows wide. So I'll probably end up taking it up to at least 24, maybe bigger. We'll see. Also, <laughs> so remember with this, 
Oh, by the way, let's talk about what it is. This is stained glass blanket. Take two. The pattern is Juggling Hexes by Wendy Harbaugh. I'm using a size F crochet hook, which is a 3.75 millimeter hook. All the centers are scraps and leftovers of socks that rock light and medium weight that either I have used, my mom has used, or that people have given to me. So, and all the black is the Loopy U Solid Series, which is their old stuff. They changed the um, mill, the mill in the dyer, and I haven't seen black anymore, so hopefully I have enough black left for my vision that I have for this. If not, I'll get as far as I can and then I'll find something else that works. So yeah, um, you might remember a while ago, I don't even remember when it was, was it Christmas time? Um, when my parents were here, my mom brought out her big tote of her socks that rock skeins that she has. Not leftovers, full skeins. And she's like, yep, go. It must have been, gosh, it must have been like a year ago because I had all that when Sarah was here. And she and I, working together, wound off. So she was my Swift and I was the little hand winding little balls. I think either, I think about 12 grams off of each of these skeins. And she told me, I don't even really care for knitting with socks that rock. So when I was back from my uncle's funeral, I was like, hey, if you don't like it, I'll take it because those colors are already in this blanket and I can use them. So she sent me back with the tote. I need to get those wound into balls and find time to make more centers because I'm starting to run out of centers is the other thing. And I also think I might hit up my stash back in there of socks that rock and wind off some other colors as well. Just little bits, just to have some variety. Maybe, we'll see. Uh, so I managed to add two more hexagons to that, but it's at least technically could be a usable blanket. So I might give that a wash this summer just because and go from there, yeah. That makes me happy though, that that's squared off. So it's like half done in my head, which makes me insanely happy. Uh, second thing is something new. I'm calling these the dark side socks. They're riding around in my TARDIS bag, which is from Stitched by Jessa Lou, which I love these. These are my favorite. So the yarn is something I pulled out of my stash. I decided, you know what, I need to make socks for me. I'm making socks for everybody else, and I'm starting to have blowouts on socks, and my sock drawer is starting to dwindle. Not, I mean, it's not dwindling. I still have probably like 80% full drawer in my dresser full of socks. But I pulled out my lone skein of, yeah, let's just do this. This is mustache yarns. Mustache yarns. That's it. I got this at at SSK the last time that I went. So like 2014, 2015. God, has it already been five years? Anyway, that's what I got. It's a self-striping. This is her dark side number four. So she did a series for um, Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon album. If you go on Ravelry, you'll be able to see it's like gray and black and then a set of like a rainbow, like the Pink Floyd Dark Side of the Moon album cover. And then she did variants on it and she didn't have the EPV, which is the variant that you see the most on Ravelry. And I haven't seen anyone else that has knit this up. If they have, they haven't posted on Ravelry. So Dark Side number four. Why am I grabbing that? It's in my lap. I actually had to start these socks twice. I'm doing a 72 stitch. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna do an afterthought heel. Right now, that's what I'm thinking, just with the self-striping. I started them the first time and I was using my um, Addy Flexi Flips that I had gotten to fix um, the mittens for the doctor at work because I wanted to try them and I'd heard such good things about them. And they were great for the thumb of the mitten. Like small, small circumferences, I like like them. It was fine. The needle bit itself is a little short for my taste just from the way that I knit. I put, use a lot of pressure from this side of my hand to manipulate the needle so it was hitting me more like about between my third and my fourth finger and that wasn't super comfortable. But 
for a mitten thumb. I went, I went with it. Tried it for the sock. Did not like. Was not my favorite at all. Had cast these on. So those the Flexi Flips and then I'm using the Sock Rockets are now are a US-1, a 2.25 millimeter needle. And I so I started the cuff, got partway into it, and then I could see ladders down both sides. And I was pulling, like trying to tighten those first couple stitches as hard as I could, and it just, it wasn't going well, and I wasn't enjoying, I was like fighting against the needles. Um, it's kind of like uh, with the chow goo, the, the red chow goo uh, needles, that it's almost like a bicycle brake cable. Those are too stiff, and I don't care to use those either. I have a few, because I tried them. But Addies are always going to be my favorite. So I've got the uh, Sock Rockets, which have the lovely sharp point of the lace needles, but then the plating of the regular Addy Turbos. And I've got a wee little baby cuff. So rather than the full rainbow, like red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, going down, it's a shorter length of yarn that goes red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. So you get this little bleppy rainbow thing, and then it goes to black, and then back to gray, obviously. So I'm partway, I'm probably about 10 rows into the ribbing on the first sock. And this is a OCD which is two perfectly matched half skeins twisted together, which I love with this. So you don't have to worry about pulling out and pulling out to get to the same spot in the yarn. These, here's the second one. These are meant, I did a really cruddy job of winding it into a ball, it's already falling apart. Um, these are really meant well, meant they're made to start in the exact same spot in the die in the die repeat. So that's great. I won't have to worry about finding it. Except I think I wound this one backwards compared to the other one. I'll have to figure it out. Don't worry. That's for the second sock. I'll worry about it then. Anyhow. So new sock on the needles. Yay. Uh, I have an F.O. So I finished my friend Sarah's birthday socks. It's May! I finished them. So happy. So, so happy. So I don't, for some reason, I don't have a start date on these on my Ravelry page. I don't know why. Huh. So these were originally going to be for me when I showed them a picture of the yarn to Sarah. And she's like, well, you know what I like? Yeah, I'll take them if you don't want them. So these became her birthday socks when I realized, oh shoot, I should get going on those. I started them sometime in March or April, I think. Finished them May 16th. They, the ends are woven in, but they still need a bath. But these are out of um, Zitron Trekking XXL in the very imaginative colorway 109, which is this gorgeous, gorgeous, it always reads too blue. Why does it read so blue? It's not blue, it's like, it's got a denim blue and a very, very pale, like an, almost like an acid, acid wash denim blue in it. But otherwise, it's a very plummy, purpley colorway, which I love. They're top down, 72 stitch with a heel flap, slip stitch, heel flap, gusset, toe, regular toe, toe pick. And I knit those up on a US-1 2.25 millimeter needle. Very happy. Still, obviously, Sarah likes shorter cuffs, and she has a shorter foot than I do, so I still have a bunch of the yarn left. Don't ask me how much. I have no idea. This had been in my stash forever, it seemed like, and now it is out of my stash, and I'm very happy. So that's all going to go with the socks to Sarah, so she has something to um, darn the socks with. She is... She is, the, okay, I know I've said this before, but she is the very definition of knitworthy. Oh my good gracious, this girl has kept every single pair of socks that I have ever, ever knit for her from way back before the podcast started. The hand spun ones that I did, 
um, the ones that were our little like secret, I can't even remember who the dyer was, but it was a Lost colorway because she and I used to watch Lost together and then call each other and discuss it over the phone. <laughs> So she'd be watching in Minnesota, I'd be watching in Nebraska, and then we'd call each other. Oh my gosh, did you see what Jack just did? She's been darning those. And initially, I hadn't been sending extra yarn with, um, and she was darning them with embroidery floss. <laughs> so uh, she now, we went through my stash last summer, and we found as many of the bits and bobs as I could for her to take back to get all her mending and darning done with appropriate yarn. Appropriate like matching, at least kind of. So yeah, she is the definition of net worthy, and I, l I love you, Sarah. You're awesome. Such a good friend. Anyway, uh, so that's my FO of the week. Uh, now, uh, how about pokey things? I actually did some stitching. I just did it yesterday, but come on. I did, huh, I did get the fronts and backs, the front and back on my scrub top, which is back in there, and I'm not going to go get it. Uh, I did get those joined together, the front and back. I still have to do the underarm seams and do all the hems, and then I'll have a snowflake top to wear in probably June or July, because that's appropriate. That's how much time I have had for sewing. It's sad, but... I did yesterday afternoon while the kids and hubby were napping. I pulled out my uh, We Do Geek cross stitch, which is from Fangirl Stitches, and I added, got almost a whole nother line added. So I'm doing this up on Even Weave that I got at Joann's. I think it's 25 count Even Weave, and the, and the colorway is Mushroom. And I added, it's really, why is the green so hard to read? So that last line, we know the truth is out there, which is an X-Files. I added that. And then there's going to be more black that says, over here, that says, and that. And the next line reads, there's coffee in that nebula, which is my favorite, because no one understands that except those of us who have watched Voyager so many times, and Captain Janeway and her obsession with coffee, probably why I love the woman so much. There's coffee in that nebula. That would so be me. It's like, I don't care about getting home. Find me coffee. Or whatever passes for coffee. Uh, but yeah, in an afternoon, I managed to get almost a whole nother line put in, even with the dogs holding me down and needing to go in and out and me get up and down a bunch. So, yay. Uh, very and sundry. There's... Oh, what's coming up? Beginning of June. It's a little closer so I can see my calendar here. June something. June. 6th, 7th, 8th, and 9th is the Estes Park Wool Market up at Estes Park, Colorado. Uh, the family and I will be there. I'm taking class all day on the 7th um, from Claims and Claims to do uh, drum carding, which should be fun, informative, something that kind of piqued my interest. Uh, and I'll probably go do the vendor market after class on Friday, just so then I'm not having to drag hubby and the kids through. And I can actually shop leisurely. <laughs> like, I haven't been able to do the last couple of years because they've been there. Uh, and I couldn't do it at Yarn Fest because the kids were there and wanting to leave as soon as we made one circuit. And then Saturday, we're going to go back as a family, see the sheep and goats, uh, watch the llama competitions, um, we might head up into the National Park, go through Estes Park, do some fun touristy stuff that we haven't had a chance to do as a family. So that'll be fun. And then, uh, let's see, what else? Oh, not what I wanted to click on. Sorry, I'm clicking on the computer. Coming up in August. Let's say it was like the beginning, beginning middle-ish of August is something I, I honestly never thought I'd be able to say, um, but we are coming up on the 10 year anniversary of the show. 10 years. I mean, yes, great. Okay. Yes. I took a year off, but 10 years since I started this crazy, that just had an idea and threw it out there to the universe and well, the knitting universe anyway. And yeah, 10 years. 
Oh my goodness. So much has changed in 10 years, but here we are. Uh, I'm trying to think what else. Oh, I'm looking at what is going to be my next sweater. Because I realized, oh, I've got like 10 or 12 sweaters worth of yarn and I kind of want to buy yarn for a couple more. So I should probably work on something. And I'm looking. I'm looking in there and in there, in the craft room. And seeing I've got a whole lot. I don't even remember buying it, honestly. A whole lot of black Cascade 220 Superwash. Why did I buy like 12 skeins of Cascade black Cascade 220 Superwash? I don't know. I don't know. But then I've got a whole shelf of the leftovers of Dreaming Color, which is also a Superwash worsted weight. Um, maybe time to do another Colorwork sweater? Maybe. So I'm trying to pick through patterns on Ravelry. If anyone has any suggestions, I'd love to hear them because I'm trying to figure out worsted weight. Worsted weight. Because that's what I got. If you have any suggestions, pop them in the episode thread. I'm going to try to get this show up quicker this week. So I think that's it for now. I'm going to try to be a little more diligent with my crafting and get off my phone in the evenings because I've just been coming home from work basically collapsing on the couch and scrolling Facebook and Instagram. And that's not a way to get anything done around here. So I guess until next week, everybody, next week, maybe? Next time I see you. I'll just say next time I see you. Until then, happy knitting. <laughs>